So I believe the main reason that people my age don't invest in the stock market is simply because they lack the confidence to do so and they're not that informed. So that's why in today's episode, I'm gonna share with you some of the free resources I use to stay up to date on what's going on in the market as well as the news. That way you too can feel a little bit more at ease when it comes to investing your own money. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Sage, also known as The Singing Investor. And if you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm sure that you have all heard the expression, Rome wasn't built in a day. And the same thing really holds true when it comes to investing. You shouldn't expect to be a pro overnight. So the more time and effort you put into understanding this material and staying up to date on what's going on in the market, the more confident you'll be in making your own financial decisions. I'm gonna be leaving links in the comment section below if you'd like to get more information on some of the resources I'll be sharing with you, as well as timestamps if you'd like to jump around to a specific resource that stands out. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So the first resource I use, and this is in no particular order, is Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that delivers the latest news from Wall Street to Silicon Valley. And as opposed to traditional business news, which can be dense and let's be honest, kind of boring to read, Morning Brew makes staying up to date a little bit more fun and simple, giving you everything you need to know in an easy five minutes. So when you pull up Google and you do a search for Morning Brew, the very first link will have you subscribe to their newsletter. You give them your email and what you're gonna see every single morning is a Morning Brew briefing and this is gonna cover everything that's going on in the market, as well as some stuff going on in the news as well, but it does a really great job of getting straight to the point, giving you what's the most important pieces of information and letting you just get on with your day. Next up, we've got Robinhood Snacks Daily, a media company that is associated with Robinhood, the online trading app. Now, Snacks Daily makes financial news digestible by providing readers with many chunks of information on what's going on in the market specifically. Now, what's really nice about uh, Snacks Daily is they also have a daily podcast hosted by Jack Kramer and Nick Martell. So if you'd rather listen than read, that's a really great option. They always bring a lot of energy every single morning and will definitely help keep you in the loop by tuning in. Now, one other thing that's really cool about Robinhood Snacks that's similar to Morning Brew is they also send you a morning newsletter that covers some of the key takeaways um, that took place in the market the previous day. Now the third outlet I use is what you're watching this video on and that's YouTube. I can't even begin to mention all of the YouTubers I've watched that share tips and advice on financial literacy, strategies, as well as investing. And what's really great is there are a handful of content creators out there that actually invite you into their investment journey. So they showcase their entire portfolio, talk about all of the different holdings they have, why they like them, why they bought them, uh, why they don't like certain stocks, as well as potential buys uh, that they're interested in. And what's cool too is based on the videos you watch on YouTube, its algorithm is actually gonna naturally recommend more videos that cover similar material. Lastly, if there's a company that you've heard of or an industry you wanna get more information on, all you have to do is type it in the search bar on YouTube and odds are there's someone out there that's made a video about it. Now the one thing I'll say here about YouTube is there are a lot of people making videos that aren't necessarily financial advisors. So always take what they're saying with a grain of salt and know that your research shouldn't simply stop right then and there after a video or you shouldn't just buy a stock simply because some random guy or girl on YouTube said that it was a good stock to buy. Next we've got Yahoo Finance. Yahoo, obviously well known. Um, they also just have different articles and trending um, news pieces that can help you stay up to date on what's going on in the market. But one of the reasons I really like Yahoo Finance is if there was a specific company you wanted to get more information on, you can type them in on Yahoo Finance's search bar. It's going to show you its performance and you can take a peek at its analysis where it shows whether it's a buy, hold, or sell. So based on different analysts that have put in their opinion, it helps you as the investor feel a little bit more informed on whether or not other people think that stock is a good buy or sell. So think of it as a second line of defense to reassure you that what you think is a good idea, other people might also think is a good idea too. Now the last resource I'm gonna share with you guys is called The Motley Fool, founded around 1993 by two brothers, Tom and David Gardner. The Motley Fool aims to help a lot of people better attain financial freedom through their website. So they have a ton of different trending articles, they offer different podcasts, books, newspaper columns, radio shows, as well as some premium investing services if you wanted to spend that type of money. Now, their site, again, has a lot of great information. Highly recommend you look through it. They offer some investment basics so you could learn how to invest, 
Um, they also got some information on the stock market if you wanted to you know, build up your vocabulary, um, as well as information on retirement, personal finance, and things like that. Well, there you guys go, a nice short and sweet video. Uh, those are some of the five resources I use to be more informed and stay up to date on what's going on in the market. That way I feel a bit more confident in putting my hard earned money into the stock market. Now there are other sites, of course, not just the five that I mentioned. Companies like Bloomberg have great resources. Uh, Seeking Alpha is another great site, as well as Investopedia for beginners to really just get all the info they could possibly wanna know about investing, different terms, literacy, things like that. If you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. On my channel, I like to help the younger generation better understand what they can do with their finances. So I like to talk about all things personal finance and investing, while also sharing what I love most, which is singing. And if you remember from last week's episode, my goal was to hit about 100 subscribers by my birthday, March 1st. So if you would, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you can help me reach that goal. So stay tuned for next week's episode. I appreciate you making it to the end and stay well.